um, Alex Osterwalder came into a board meeting for the MPI International Board <clears throat> and kind of started talking to us about business models. And I never met Alex, um, who actually lives here in Switzerland as well. So kind of strange to have to go all the way to Vancouver and meet up with him there. But So he came into the board and he started talking to us about business models and business modeling. And I you know, really couldn't, you know, at the time I wasn't very familiar with the concepts. Um, and it kind of dawned on me that he took this PhD study and reduced it to one piece of paper. I thought it was the most terrific thing that I saw because it was highly visual. And his mission there was to kind of cut away the blah, blah, blah in the boardroom. Right? So many words get used and big words and big concepts and that some people think is really interesting and others just don't connect to it. Um, mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, from that, I, you know, we started working with that and remodeling MPI's business model. And really the book that, that he shared, he sh you know, half of it is available for free. You can just download it on businessmodelgeneration.com. And, and the book in itself is, is so visual and so different from what I've read before in terms of format. You can tell I've got all these little post-its and I use it practically every day. And it's one of those things that really got me excited about rethinking the way that uh, businesses create value. And I actually applied it on my own business and I use it when I work with clients and associations. And I, you know, I started thinking in, in these nine different cubicles and all of a sudden all these things start making sense without having to use all these difficult words that people just you know, throw around from time to time, which is what happens when you talk a business, right? Mm -hmm. So this has grown and the interesting thing is the book was actually put together <clears throat> by 470 people. So he was together with uh, Yves Pignor and he kind of put this book together in the first instance. But then events were used to kind of refine the content of the book, which is an interesting model in itself. And he publishes the event model of how the book came to be because he felt that the book had to be innovative um, when, when you talk about business model innovation, right? And the innovation is a shift in the business model that you can visualize. And that's how innovation all of a sudden gets a real tangible thing, right? It becomes something that you really understand. Good. So with that in our in our in our back pocket, I started you know experimenting and, and, and learning about this. And then a colleague and I, Wolf Fischen, uh, we you know we're both into this stuff now, and so we're using it a lot. And he you know Alex came up with this concept that he uh, that and, and 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 the value proposition was more learning in two days than in your past year. Right. That was a kind of a remit for an event that he launched that was called the Business Design Summit. It's this one here. And the Business Design okay. Summit took place in uh, Berlin earlier this year. And um, it really brought together you know, 12, 13 of the leading thinkers around business modeling. And a lot of people whose work I've come across, I said, oh, we should go here. Right? We should do this. So when I had lunch with Alex about three weeks before the event, I asked him, what does the business model look like of your event? And he kind of looked at me going, oh, I didn't really draft the business model of the event, and you know, I'm just glad it's on, and it's, you know, it's actually sold out, and now we've got this promise to, to make it happen, and it's kind of scary, right, to put on an event. <laughs> it really freaked, you know, freaked all of them quite, you know, out quite a bit, because they have a reputation, they've got you know, good thinking, but all of a sudden you have to turn this into a 250-person event. And the mm -hmm. event was very disruptive for what he does, which is a startup business, very much like what... Um, uh, what I'm doing at the moment. So when we ended up talking to him, we, we said, well, let us come in and we'll, we'll, we'll give you our perspective on events because that's what we do. We do events and, you know, my colleague and I are into events for long years, long number of years. And so we decided to bootstrap our thinking that we had around event modeling because an event is a temporary business. Uh, and so we took the thinking and kind of looked at literally all the stuff that I get excited about. Right? And I'll show you the little stack here. This is like all this stuff that I'm, I'm really geeky about, right, which is <laughs> and business modeling and, you know, meeting architecture and service design and ROI of events and all these concepts that, you know, big concepts that in our industry is really starting to get traction. Yeah. But then somebody that organizes an event doesn't necessarily want to read all these books before they kind of put together an event. So the event model um, generation Right, which we've just got a curve that it is alongside. This is the alpha of the book that we're kind of putting up here. Um, okay. Event model generation workbook. Um, we're currently, let's say after we started bootstrapping this, this event and we kind of created this model, a highly visual one as well, kind of taking familiar concepts and kind of seeing how they integrate, how you can go through a nine-step approach to putting together an event without, let's say from the perspective of the meeting owner, 
having to understand the nitty gritty about events. Right. So let me let me stop you just very quickly, just to concisely. I want to make sure that I get this. Um, what you're doing basically is presenting a business model for an event. You're you're determining a business model for an event, correct? Now the business model is a, is a, is, a, is a part of it because you prototype okay. types of business models. But what it is is really a systematic way of extracting from different stakeholders' perspectives what people think before attending an event and what they think after attending an event, and not just think, but physically what they say and do. Right. So we use empathy mapping techniques in the pre and post after having dissected who the stakeholders are. And then we kind of start designing with the end in mind in terms of what is the behavior we would like them to have after the event. And really, the one that organizes the event, that's all they need to worry about. You have many people that are interested in all those bits and bobs in between, right? whether it be how to design the value proposition, how to extract pain and gains and create pain and gain relievers, how you turn that into service design and content design or instructional design for the actual event, how we then put together a PL or a business model for your event, or actually prototype different business models before you decide should we do an event or should we do something different. Mm -hmm. All those steps are kind of documented now systematically so that it becomes a very logical process incorporating things like empathy mapping, value proposition design, um, um, ROI methodology thinking, the Philips ROI methodology, the business model canvas and our expertise from the meetings and events industry, which really comes as soon as all those inputs are available, and you start putting together the event with the pre, during, and post. In a post-event, you reassess the empathies of all these different stakeholder groups to determine whether the behavior before and after has physically changed against what you initially planned it to be. Right? So, so that's it's kind very, of com very comprehensive. It sounds like you've covered a lot of things here. The business, the objective of the event, um, <clears throat> Well, it became really logical to us at some stage when we kind of went through this experience and we kind of dissected it and we took all these different components because this event, you know, the Business Design Summit was kind of a call to toolsmiths, right, to create models and highly visual components that you could physically, you know, use and download very easily and then start penciling in to have a sensible dialogue around the creation of the events. And one of the big problems we have in the events industry is very much the same that business modeling has is there's a lot of people talking blah, 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 and yeah. they're crisscrossing each other with different meanings and different levels of abstract thinking, and they're, they're all over the place in their discussions. And this allows you to structure the discussion from you know, step one to step two to step three to step four and involve only those that you need to involve to, you know, at the given stages because not every meeting owner wants to be involved from beginning to end and all the different nitty-gritty components. They want back of the napkin sketches of their event models. Maybe they want you, know, you to extract the outputs or the inputs from the different stakeholders and then present them back to them. Or maybe, and that's what we found now, is we're now working with actual clients that are testing the model. Um, and we've just done a baseline on an event for the Federation of European Risk Managers according to the model. It's very interesting. And by mapping out the different stakeholder perspectives, what we see is that the process of doing that is a really good way of involving everybody into the conspiracy, as I like to call it, of your event. So people really become part of the, the thing that you do and the reason why you're creating the event. And all of a sudden, they buy into all the different things that are going on. And they're giving you advice on which direction to go. Yeah, so they have a sense of ownership, it sounds like, now. Well, hopefully they do. I mean, this, this is, we've, we've now, we now have about five events that we're kind of prototyping and that we're using the model on in the alpha version. <clears throat> and they're going to become part of the book that we're going to publish uh, next year, but we wouldn't publish the book without involving a lot of people and doing a number of events around it, because the book is, you know, it's, it's, it's practically finished, at least in the way that we think it could be written, but we know a lot of stuff is missing and a lot of stuff is still wrong, so by actually working with people that do, that, that you know, clients that do the events, associations, corporations, you know, NGOs, um, they actually ask all the right questions by going through the process and then, you know, say, couldn't we simplify this, or I don't understand that, or how was that clarifying question helping me to answer this, or... And I think that's kind of our bulletproofing of the models before we actually, you know, start packaging it up. And, and you have a website, too, that it, it looks like you're enlisting um, more feedback there. Am I right? Yeah, so, the, so it's still very primary. You know, eventmodelgeneration.com, you can find some of the first, uh, you know, thinking, just some visual pictures. There's nothing much there yet. You know, the, the beta version is actually being built right now with 
some of the content components, and then we're looking to engage a group of people that are going to help us kind of uh, you know, bulletproof the book and kind of help us uh, in, in events is actually our thought. What we'd like to do is actually, uh, you know, we, we came up with a five-year plan, which sounds you know, crazy to do, you know, to think five years ahead, but we actually, in our five-year plan, what, we're, what we'd like to do is uh, establish uh, a lab, one in every continent, to actually bulletproof thinking you know, with an academic institution, a series of events, and a destination. That would actually then start applying this and start documenting events like this. So ultimately, what you get is business models, right? That you would be able to kind of look at, or event models, uh, because I think you know I see a lot of events that are quite similar in kind of their objectives, um, and ultimately the design of the meetings, which is one of the granularity levels, quite low, quite low down into this. Um, people are are looking for options how to reach specific objectives, mm -hmm. and if it's if people can compare it to other events or if they can see examples, a bit like a cookbook, right? Mm -hmm. I read cookbooks and then I get inspired and I start cooking something up. I wouldn't necessarily make the recipe, but it inspires me to do something specific. Mm -hmm. Same thing goes with this. By thinking about business models, you come up with creative ways of, you know, um, putting together your value proposition and bringing it to the market. Same thing goes for events. Yeah. Oh, that's a brilliant way to put it. And it already gets me inspired just thinking about it that way. <laughs> because as you say, the blah, blah, blah stuff just can make your eyes glaze over and then it yeah, takes all the fun out of it. By that. I've, I've seen too much of that happen. I think our industry is at a level of sophistication now where you know, we have a lot of good publications, but now it's really about kind of assembling the good thinking and, and giving people this, this stepped approach. I've had more than, you know, more than five, six different people tell me, I wish there was a process by which we could approach this and, and it would just be, you know, like a stepped and, and a visual thing. And I think that's exactly what we're intending to do is make it so easy that you could do this at various levels of sophistication, uh, but yet, you know, have fun doing it. And I think that's really critical, right? Yeah. Um, one of the core things that Alex told us, you know, we did a workation where we kind of evaluated uh, the events, post event with the guys that organized it, <clears throat> and this was their strategy meeting, and I could tell they were terribly frustrated. You know, they said, <clears throat> although the event was a big success from the participants' perspective, right, the way we participated, to them as a meeting owner and as a, as a core sponsor of the event. Um, this thing displaced about you know five to six months of their startup. Right, so they kind of put their company, you know, into standby mode for five, six months, which, you know, is is not was not the focus and the intent of the event. So it's a terribly frustrating experience. Um, and I, I see this back with many meeting organizers or people that own events, is that, you know, yes, they're very good and they're very good at brand building, but also they displace a lot of effort and attention, which you know could and should be used somewhere else. Right. And I think this is where we're trying to simplify that process so that it becomes part as a management vehicle or as a transformational vehicle of you know, corporations or associations or NGOs. Um, and that's really what it deserves to be. I, I think events, you know, I, I find it a shame if events are put in that little corner of shame by saying, you take too much of my attention, right? I don't think we should, we should allow that to happen. Then we have to come up with systemizing and, and kind of uh, decomposing and, and encoding the way that you put together events. Yeah. Which is exactly what we're trying to do here. Yeah. Oh, I would I would go even further. It's it's more than just a shame. It really comes down to the survival of events uh, for a lot of corporations. You know, it, you you have to you have to have buy-in from all the the big the big people. You have to have a return on your investment. You have to have a return on. You have to be clear about your objectives, you have to be able to accomplish those objectives and to prove that you've accomplished those objectives. So and do it very also, systematically, that's, that's the whole point, right? So yes. <clears throat> the thing is, we found, we found that the most senior people are very interested in the discussion, providing you can clearly explain to them why you're doing it, how mm -hmm. you're doing it, and what you're doing, right? So they're more than eager to get involved, and, and it's really fun to see. I mean, um, one of the... One, a biomedical company in Austria actually, you know, to ask us to come in and kind of do an event really from scratch with them for 2015. It's the most important event, and they say, you know, we've been doing it really well, but I think we should kind of do it even more systematically. And uh, and so we're actually going to walk through the whole process, you know, all the nine different steps for all the different stakeholders and all the different components, and really kind of with their team, they get a full understanding. They get a chance to talk to all their different customer groups and sponsors, et cetera, et cetera, to extract all that critical information. 
and then we visualize it, which makes it really fun. Right? People like to see things in pictures and in colors, and yeah. and then it comes really to life. So, we, so we've got this big map of the event that you kind of map out, and then people really understand where you are, and why you are there, and what you're extracting there, and why. So when the event happens, they kind of own the whole thing because they created it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so our, our mission is for people to be able to do this, right? We may create some training and stuff down the line, but people should be able to do this themselves. Right? Yeah. This is not, we're not trying to sell some form of consultancy or whatever it is around events here. What we're trying to do is encode you know, the, the proficiency of creating events systematically and then making it so much fun that people would want to document their event like this. Wow. Yeah. Well, well that's, that's very exciting. Thank you so much for sharing that, Rud. I really appreciate it. I think that a lot of event planners are going to appreciate it as well. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's not too late to, to contribute to it, actually. I mean, we need all the brain power we can get to put into this, right? Because Wolf Fish and myself are just two crazy guys that kind of started doing this. But we now need, you know, an industry to kind of come on board and, and criticize and kind of, you know, pull this apart. At, at, at this stage, our focus is very much on the demand side. So the people that are creating these events, uh, those are the ones that we're working with very closely. Uh, but mm -hmm. we'll also want, you know, when we start, you know, getting down to the more uh, granular level, we really want the input from from all sorts of, you know, different uh, different angles. And so, I highly recommend people to go to this event model generation, and, you know, sign up to be a change maker and to be engaged in this. And uh, you know, we'll happily keep them abreast on what's going on. Okay. Well, I have done that, and I'm going to put the link um, in the blog post here so that other people can do that as well. Perfect. And um, well. Thanks a lot for, for keeping us updated on all this, Rid. Thank you, Janice. It's, 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 it's a pleasure. This is actually one of the first conversations we're having around this, so I hope we can spill the beans a little bit without spilling too much. Well, but hopefully in the future, the you, no problem. And please, please uh, come back and uh, update us further as things progress. We'll definitely do that. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye for now.